What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, I want to try to make an argument that I think some of you probably never thought I would try to make in a million years. In this video, I want to talk about how Gary Genser might not be that bad for the cryptocurrency industry. So when Gary Genser was first coming into the SEC, for those of you who were around, everyone in the crypto industry thought it was a massively bullish event. And that's because before Gary Gensler came into the SEC, he was talking about blockchain technology in an extremely bullish manner and was talking about how he was going to be the one to bring regulations to this industry, but in a way that would allow the industry to prosper. Since Gary Gensler took over, that has almost completely disappeared, and now he essentially is calling the entire industry a scam and cracking down via regulation by enforcement. Well, in this video, I want to show you why that might be the case, and I want to try to provide you guys a perspective that you probably have never seen before. I think this is going to be absolutely fascinating. Towards the end of the video, I also want to go on another pretty interesting topic, and that is why this entire Ripple SEC case could look like a complete smokescreen, a show, if you look at it from another perspective. And that other perspective I want to break down this case from is the perspective of the United States Federal Reserve. The more I look into it, the more I am absolutely shocked how close Ripple is to the Federal Reserve. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see that. I want to show you something extremely interesting that's going to make this entire Ripple SEC case seem like a joke. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Make sure you take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange, Uphold, down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start off and just show you a couple videos of Gary Gensler, and don't worry, these are not recent. These were actually from a while ago. They are a lot more tolerable, a lot easier to listen to. But I want to share with you, for those of you who weren't around, or for those of you who just don't remember, why everyone thought Gary Gensler was going to be good for the cryptocurrency industry. Now, I know that sounds absolutely shocking right now, but I think after you watch some of these clips, you guys are going to be like, what happened here? So listen up to this, and then I want to break down what I think might be happening. Now, there are a lot of things that might be happening, and I don't know for sure, no one knows for sure, but... This is a pretty interesting perspective that I don't see a lot of people putting out there, so I think you're going to find it very interesting. First, let's go over the videos. So finally, Gary, how confident are you that we could have regulation without inhibiting the, the innovation? Because it's really in the nascent stage. It's very early going. I think a lot of people who are involved in, 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 Bitcoin, in blockchain would say, don't hold us back. They, they would. I, I would say you want some form of regulation. You want traffic lights and speed limits because then the public is confident to drive on the roads, the, in this case, the crypto roads. Right. And so I think the two can coexist, but it will take a number of years to sort through and get the balance right. I believe that it's a net positive. Um, uh, so much in our economic life and in our personal lives oscillates. So it might, it might have a chilling effect on this frothy ICO market but I think it's a positive for blockchain. We have right now major institutions that want to significantly adapt and adopt, asset managers who want to invest in this space, major exchange companies that want to move into this space. Uh, the unregulated exchanges in, in aggregate, I'm making an estimate here that the unregulated exchanges in aggregate make more money, more bottom line, than the aggregate regulated spaces in the securities field around the globe right now. And, and there's a thousand plus horses running out of, on the field that got out of the barn. We've got to kind of bring them into compliance. And even for Ripple and uh, Ether, or it, maybe it's, you know, EOS or NEO or something, you know, it, but for the big market cap ones, there needs to be clarity in the market. And if the clarity in the market is that they're not securities, they might still be commodities. They might still need to comply with all those laws and so forth. Those are just a couple clips I found in a very short time of searching. There's a lot more where he sounds just as bullish on the cryptocurrency market. And that's why so many people like myself, when Gary Genser was first coming into his position at the SEC, were actually extremely optimistic. 
he was saying all these great things like cryptocurrencies have a lot of merit, blockchain technology is going to be useful in the future, but we need regulation for the market. And no one disagrees with that, of course we need regulation. This market needs to be regulated. The SEC's problem is they're trying to regulate the market with regulation that doesn't work and they're refusing to make any accommodations. But that's not what Gary Gensler was saying just a couple years ago. He very clearly says in that last clip, we need clarity, we need rules for these cryptocurrency companies that currently don't exist. So what is happening right now and why is he refusing to provide those rules? Well, something that really doesn't get talked about a lot is the fact that the SEC really isn't the government agency that's supposed to be making those rules. They are really only supposed to be enforcing rules that are made by Congress. And obviously, there are no rules made by Congress relating to cryptocurrencies. So the SEC really doesn't even have the authority to one, make rules, or two, enforce rules because there are no rules. So Gary Gensler is really just stuck to enforcing the rules of securities law and it's really confusing what's a security and what's not. Now, obviously, Gary Gensler is taking advantage of this. He's trying to make as much money as possible and stifle innovation. I completely agree with that. But by doing this, and it almost doesn't even matter if this is on purpose or not, Gary Gensler is forcing Congress to pass cryptocurrency regulation. He is forcing cryptocurrency companies offshore. He is forcing retail into situations they shouldn't be in where they are then complaining to their constituents about no investor protection. So right now, Gary Gensler is creating this massive cryptocurrency issue in the United States where Congress needs to step up and pass regulation. And you can argue that this is all by accident. He didn't mean to do this. It's just a result of his bad regulation. But that's what's happening. And the fact of the matter is, a couple years ago, he was kind of saying, we need new regulation, and now that's what's happening. And the fact of the matter is, it is happening. We just had Patrick McHenry in an interview the other day, and I showed this in another video, so if you want to see that, check out the video yesterday. But in this interview, he says, we're providing cryptocurrency regulation because Chair Gensler isn't doing his job. Now, you can argue that Chair Gensler isn't doing his job. He's doing a really bad job. He's attacking innovation. He shouldn't be suing these companies. He shouldn't be using regulation by enforcement. But he can't make rules for the cryptocurrency industry. And I'm honestly glad he's not because that would probably be even worse. So what he is doing is he is forcing Congress to act faster than they would have. And he says this right here in this interview, Patrick McHenry. He says, we are going to have cryptocurrency regulation or at least a bill for it in the next two months. So what we see right here is Gary Gensler, this guy who was obviously bullish on blockchain technology a couple years ago. This guy who was saying this market needs clarity very clearly is now forcing Congress to pass cryptocurrency regulation. Now, some of you might think that's just because they are trying to stop him from killing this market. But there is part of me that really does believe this might have been part of his plan. Force Congress to pass regulation that they would have never done otherwise. He is forcing their hand on this issue, and maybe you would think that's just a coincidence, but there is a small part of me that looks at some of these past clips and thinks maybe this was all a plan all along. So since I'm already speculating a lot in this video, I thought I'd finish it off with just a little more speculation, and this has to do with Palau, the Federal Reserve, and Ripple. For those of you who don't know, Palau actually just launched their first CBDC on the XRP ledger. But what is so interesting about this, and almost no one is talking about it, is the fact that Palau is extremely close to the United States government. I tweeted out earlier today, Palau does what the USA says. There is no doubt in my mind that the Fed greenlighted the CBDC built on the XRP ledger. The lawsuit is a smokescreen. The Federal Reserve is working with Ripple to build central bank digital currency infrastructure. There are bigger plans at play here. And what you're looking at right here is a statement from the US government where they say the United States and Palau maintain diplomatic relations as well as deep ties and a cooperative relationship. Under the CFOA, Palau and the United States agree that the United States has full authority and responsibility for the defense and security matters in relating to Palau. One of the most important things for any sovereign country is its currency. Having a stable currency is absolutely fundamentally critical to the national security of any country, the exact thing the United States says is protecting in Palau. 
And what do we know? Well, we know Palau is literally using the US dollar. So not only is the United States going to be protecting Palau's national currency, but they are literally also using the US dollar, which needs to be issued by the Federal Reserve. This means that the Federal Reserve, 100% in my mind, green-lighted Palau's CBDC built on the XRP ledger, which shows that everything going on with the SEC right now means absolutely nothing. If the Federal Reserve is looking at XRP as a national currency for a sovereign nation, then how could it be a security? Of course it's not. This entire Ripple SEC case is just accelerated regulation. It's a way to give XRP the status it needs for it to operate in a market like this and for it to be used in a regulated way to achieve its full intended use case. All this is happening while Ripple is working with the Federal Reserve on their faster payment task force, and the more you zoom out and just look at stuff like this, it makes the entire Ripple SEC case look like a complete joke, because if the Federal Reserve really did okay Palau to build a CBDC on the XRP ledger, which looks like is exactly what's happening, then there is no way in a million years the SEC would ever have any authority to try to kill Ripple by calling XRP a security. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really means so much. And for now, Mickle out. Woo!